about you, but I'm certainly ready for another episode regarding double elimination bracket because I was not done last time. This time we're going to look at the probability of winning such double elimination bracket. So, but before you get there, please don't forget to hit that little button down there to help me grow my channel. I would really appreciate it a lot. Thank you guys, and now on to the episode. Hello and welcome to another episode of Pokemath. We're now at episode 17, and yeah, I'm still here. And today we're going to be talking about the probability of winning a double elimination bracket. Some of you might think like, hmm, didn't he talk about double elimination brackets last week? But yeah, I may have done so, but I'm far from done. And you know what? There's so much more to explore about them. And last week we just covered all the basics. So now let's get into the real interesting stuff. But before we get there today, I would like to thank Card Market for sponsoring this episode. If you need a place to buy and or sell your cards, that's the place to go. I use this for myself a lot and I couldn't be happier. Thanks a lot, Card Market. And now back to the episode. And what I'm really uh, hyped about today is that today is actually going to be a real math episode. So finally, oh well, finally, I decided myself, but you know what? It's nice to be back and doing some actual math. Don't worry, it's not going to be that bad, but we're going to do the best we can, right? So we're going to be looking into more of these brackets over here. So let's do so. But first, what question are we actually going to answer? We're going to answer what is your chance of winning a double elimination bracket? Of course, given some assumptions, but sure, our model is only as good as our assumptions. But you know what? Let's get into it. Not dwell with this any longer. Let's just jump into it. So let's do some background first, shall we? So, like I said in the last episode, we covered the basic principles of a double elimination bracket. But just to quickly recap for viewers who have not either seen the episode or just forgotten in the process, suppose we have a four team elimination bracket, or double elimination bracket, sorry. They're all seated into the winner's bracket up here. So everybody will start in the winner's bracket, just like you see in, say, a single elimination bracket. And if you win, you just progress or advance to the next game in the bracket here and here and then so forth. When you then lose a game, you will drop down to the loser's bracket and only upon losing your second game, i.e. losing a game in the loser's bracket, you'll be out of the event. And then one more note we should say is this one here, because this is a match that is not always triggered. What do I mean by that? I mean, say that we have the grand finals against the winners of the winner's bracket coming from the top side here, and then the winner of the loser's bracket coming from the bottom side here. The, lo the winner of the loser's bracket will have to beat the winner of the winner's bracket twice in order to win the event, because the winner of the winner's bracket has not yet lost a single game. And therefore this game might trigger if the winner of the loser's bracket wins the first final match. So that's how it works. Okay, so what are we gonna look at exactly? Like I said so many times, but you know, couldn't hurt hearing this one more time, the chance of a player winning such a bracket. And you know what? To help us illustrate this today, I'd like to welcome Tor to the episode. So we're gonna be using Tor Redcliffe as an example of a good player. Well, I couldn't find any better example than him and he surely is the best example out there. He doesn't need any further introduction, I believe. Personally, he's one of the best players of the game. So actually, our question turns into, what is Tord's chance of winning a double elimination bracket? So that's going to be fun, I hope. Let's see if uh, Tord can uh, be of much assistance when we're going to explain our examples here in a moment. But before, we have a few assumptions. First, we assume a flat win rate. That is, Tord's win rate is the same against any other player in the bracket. So the win rate we assign him is going to have the same, well, same win rate, regardless of which player he meets, okay? That's the first assumption. The second is the brackets that we're going to be using are only going to be to a power of two. So that means two, four, eight, 16, and so forth. We could do any numbers in between, but that will introduce buys and make the calculation a little interesting, let's say. Well, as long as Tord didn't give a buy, then it would be the same, but for, il for illustration purposes, it's much easier to keep it this way. And then of course we have that we only look at the probability of winning so-called match. So we don't take any um, difference between the match being best of one or best of three. The win rate we're gonna to assign toward is for the win rate of the entire match you'll be playing. And then of course, finally, we give toward a win rate, which I think is very fitting, just 90% for illustration purposes. I could just have given another one, but 90% seems to, you know, really illustrate how this is gonna work here. And you know what, with that said, then I think, oh, 
Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. So we have to look at the other matches as well. So of course, there's other matches playing the bracket and just the matches involving Tord. However, the win rate between the other matches are not of our concern. They could, for my sake, have any win rate between each other or not, because that doesn't influence Tord's chance of winning the bracket. So with that said, let's get on to the first example here. And we start a little simple to create a benchmark and simply just look at a single elimination bracket, like an eight persons bracket, just like this one here. And of course, the probability of winning such a bracket in Torch case all boils down to just P over N, or sorry, P to the power N, my bad. And of course, P is the probability of winning and N is the depth of the bracket. In other words, N is the power of two to which you have the number of players. That sounds very complicated, but for this example here, this would be n equals three because you've got eight players because two to the power of three is eight, as an example. And to put in the numbers here for this one, if Tord would participate in such an event, his overall winning chance would be 72.9%, which is simply just 0 0.90 to the power three. So that's how you would calculate just for a single elimination bracket, which is pretty straightforward. So now we have our benchmark. Let's go and see how this actually works for a double elimination bracket. And we start with the simplest one of all. Simply just two players in a bracket. And of course, this may for some just seem like a very complicated way of stating a best of three actually. And well, it is. But you know what, for starting somewhere, this is a good way to illustrate it. So, okay, let's first add Tor to our bracket. And now, hmm, yeah, you're actually right. I need another opponent for Tor. So who could that be? Who would Tord have a consistent 90% win rate over? I got it. So let's introduce my brother, Jesper. Hello, Jesper, and welcome to the episode, and thanks for being Tord's, uh, well, let's just, you know, opponent, okay? So looking at this bracket here, for instance, we can look at the ways Tord can actually win such a bracket and add all these individual probabilities together to get the overall probability of Tord winning such a bracket. So the way we can do it, Tord can either just win two straight games. So in other words, he could win just the first match and the second match. Then he have eliminated Jesper twice, right? And then he will win the event. He could also win the first, lose the second and win the third one. He could also lose the first and win the two others. You can add all these individual probabilities together. So the first path would just be P squared because that's the probability of winning twice, you win two games. And then of course we have two times P squared times one minus P. What do I mean by all that kind of mumbo jumbo? We have one minus P is just the probability of losing a match. And this happens twice, right? Because there's two paths from which Tord will lose one game. So there's two times this term. And then we can just fill in the number 0, 090 and we get an overall win percentage of 97.2, which is much higher than just the 90% from before with a two player bracket if you just play one game. And that actually makes perfect sense if you ask me because now Tord actually has another chance of winning the bracket should he be unfortunate and lose that one game to Jesper. So he would get a gain of 7.2% if a finals would just be a two player or a two double elimination bracket. So two player double elimination bracket rather than just a straight up single game. This could also of course just be said, hey, it's just the same as going from a single match to best of three and indeed it actually is. So this also shows that a best of three is better for the better player already. But you know what? Let's take this to another example and expand this to a four person's bracket. And of course, oh yeah, I'm missing a few opponents now. So we only have Tord and Jesper. So who are we gonna add? You know what? Let's add two more Jespers to the mix. So now we're gonna introduce Tord and three Jespers. We're gonna be doing just like before. We're gonna count all the paths from which Tord can actually win the event. So of course, Tord can also just win three straight games. That's P to the power of three, no problem there, that's one path. He could lose his final match, but then get that bonus match, so to speak, because he haven't lost yet. That gives the second term. He could of course also lose a game in the second round and then win out. He could also be unfortunate to lose the first game and then just win out. And then we have all these four terms from which we can just add together, fill in the number 0, 090 and get the percentage of 93.31%. So if we expand the event from a two to a three per four persons player event, his win rate will not drop that much. And it will still be above his 90% if it's just been a best of one with one opponent game, say. So still very interesting, I think, and still shows that the moving to a double elimination bracket over single elimination bracket increases his chances of winning. 
But you know what? I'm not done here yet. So let's expand this to a eight persons bracket. And yes, I'm just going to add some more Jespers. So introducing four more Jespers. And oh, wait, that's actually a Chumley, isn't it? Ah, Chumley Jesper. So we got that too. Let's seed them all into a bracket, just like before. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to be looking at all the paths from which Tord can win the event and sum them all up. So the picture is the same before. He can win all straight games. He can lose the final. He can lose in the third round, second round, or first round. We add all these individual probabilities together, and then we get a win rate of, or so, a probability of winning the event of 88.7%, which is still very high, considering an eight-persons event. And the, well, the math just adds up to exactly the same as before. So let's just, well, move forward and expand this to an even bigger bracket. And now, 16 players. And let me guess, yeah, you are absolutely right, Slowpoke. I'm just going to introduce more Jespers. So here we got eight more different Jespers. And we're going to seed them all into the bracket and see what actually happens this time. So there you go, Jespers. And now let's add up all the ways Tord can win yet again. So of course, you can just win straight out or you can lose a match in the final or one of the rounds before that. We have all these six different terms now. And now we can add them all together, just like we did before arriving at an overall win rate at 83.66% of him waiting, uh, winning a 16-person bracket, basically saying Tord against 15 times Jesper. No, I'm not calling all Tord's opponent a Jesper here in real life. This is just for illustration purposes, so I'm not here to offend anybody else than maybe Jesper. But you know what? This still illustrates the purpose here that we have today. So I think this is a very nice way of doing it. And now we have shown for 2, 4, 8, and 16 players... Let's put all this together in an overall chart and compare it with single elimination. So I put up the win rate next to each other and I actually did everybody a favor and expanded all this to 256, so the case of the Players' Cup, say. And of course, this is under the assumption that Torch win rate is flat, right? So it's 90% against any person out there. And then, of course, you can see the gain of going to a double elimination bracket compared to a single elimination bracket. So, okay, we can put this aside and we can actually put this together to a formula for calculating in this example here Torch chance of winning double elimination bracket but you can just replace the p with your probability of winning that you would think and you will get your probability of winning such a bracket and n of course is just the depth of the bracket as before and in other words just to how many times do you have to lift two to the power of what to arrive at the number of players so for instance if you have 256 players in the bracket n would just take the number eight because there'll be two to the power eight. And that actually would be the final formula for how to actually do this. But you know what? We don't stop right here. There's still many more interesting things to explore in today's episode. So you know what? We're just going to graph it all for different win rates. So look in the red line of this picture next to me here. We see the probability of winning for a single nation event. And the black line represents a double elimination bracket win. And notice here, they intersect exactly at 50%. That will always be the case. And what you can quickly see here, if your win rate is above 50%, you gain from playing a double elimination bracket, which hopefully we should make sense. And then just the other way around, if your win rate is below 50%, you then take a loss from playing a double elimination bracket, of course. And now, if we would expand this to, say, four players, you see that the curve now starts moving ever so slightly to the right. So the gain from having towards 90% win rate here would actually just this distance here would become larger. And if I move up to an eight person event, you see that curve becomes even steeper, making this distance again larger. And we see it again and again. And we also see that this has to move further and further and further and further to the right. So the more players we add to the event, the more this curve we move to the right and the better the better player would have to be in order to win the event. And that is actually very interesting because of course, towards 90% is still very high, but suppose you have a lower percentage, that percentage would increasingly have to be higher and higher and higher for your chances to well, sustain and winning such a large event. And actually, I expand this graph to 256 just to, you know, say the maximum purpose for Pokemon in this case, for the Player's Cup, say. But you know what? It doesn't stop there. There's one more thing we can illustrate this a little better. We can actually look at the relative gain in if we would change towards win rate in this example by just 1% or just a small change in anybody's win rate, right? So what we can do, we can calculate the ratio between the probability of winning a double elimination bracket 
over the province of winning a single nation bracket, and we can simply graph that. Well, why is this so interesting? It's because if this ratio between these two numbers is larger than one, you see there's a relative gain of an extra percentage, say, for you if you would yeah, try, attempt to win double nation bracket. So if you look at, for instance, this two-player graph here, anything above 50%, of course, as you can see here, the ratio is above one, so you have a relative gain, and we also see there's a maximum gain just around 0 0.80, or maybe a little below 0 0.80 here, where you can see this is the maximum gain. It's not that you don't get any gain after that, but the gain is relatively smaller every time. Still a gain, but it's just smaller. And this same idea is illustrated when we move to four players, or even to eight players, this curve happens that just, just to be that this hump, so to speak, moves further and further to the right again. But you see this area also becomes larger, but as you can see, it moves to the right, showing that, well, the better player has to better the larger the bracket. So we can also move to 16, and our extreme case being 256. And you see this hump becomes more and more steep, but you also see that the top of this hump becomes higher and higher and actually moves closer and closer to this 90% toward half in this example. But any lower number, he would have to be even better in order, well, to sustain his win rate in this big bracket. So I think this is very interesting to look at. And now we also have a formula to how to calculate this, which is, well, a lot of fun, I think. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned that if you have a double elimination bracket compared to a single elimination bracket, it makes it better for the better player, of course, because you give his, him or her a better chance of winning, simply by giving them an extra chance, essentially. We also see that the larger the bracket, so the more players in the event, the better the better player have to be, as illustrated by my graphs here earlier. And you know what? It doesn't even stop there. There's still a lot more to explore, but I hope you enjoyed today's episode and hopefully learned something. And with that said, I hope you all have a great day and until next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's episode about the probability of, say, toward winning such a double elimination bracket. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. And you know what? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And please do not forget to hit this subscribe button to help me build this channel. It's still relatively new, and I hope you guys can help me grow this channel even further. And that said, I would like to thank Card Market for helping me do and such with sponsoring this video. If you need a place to go and buy your singles or sell your singles, especially on the European market, that is the place to go. So don't hesitate. Go there. I certainly already did, and I love buying my cards from there. Thank you very much again, and thanks to you guys out there for watching today's episode, and have a great day.